Now before I start this video, this is for you haters. This is for the people who are about to say that Preller traded this guy who whiffs punches more than he whiffs batters for this other guy who just can't stop hitting grand slams. Let me remind you that Preller was the guy who signed James Shields in the first place. So it was his mess to fix up. We should have never even gotten in that position. He literally set us back five years because of deals like this and trading away all our prospects. But back to this video. In case you're out of the loop, the Padres and Mariners completed a seven player trade in which these four players were traded for these three players. Now I'm gonna tell you who won this trade, but before I do that, leave a comment down below who you think won the trade or who you think I would think won that trade. Wow, that's a tongue twister and a half. Now we're gonna go through each player one by one and first, we're going to look at the two pitchers that the Mariners gave the Padres. First is Austin Adams. Seems like a solid pitcher. 3.77 ERA, 14.8 K per 9, 1.097 whip. All above MLB average. Seems like a decent arm for the bullpen. But then we got this other dude, Dan Altavia. And he's complete garbage. Above a 7 ERA, over 2 home runs per game, 1.629 whip. This is terrible. But the interesting thing to note is that this guy uses his slider more than his fastball. And even in these clips that you're about to watch, his slider is his source of success. If he can't locate it or if he can't just throw it that day, like he has no chance of success. But the bigger problem is, Austin Adams is also a first pitch slider guy. So we clearly don't have room for both of them in our bullpen, both being right handed pitchers that throw sliders first. So one of them is clearly not going to last. But if that's the case, it just seems like we're taking on another body. So yeah, Preller, maybe you think that this Altavia guy is going to take Adam's spot and hold it until Adams comes back and then you send Altavia away? I, I don't know what you're doing, Preller. I'm not going to lie. But anyways, let's move on to the main piece that we traded for. Austin Nola. He has a really good slash line. He's hitting really well this year. And I think the most telling stat that he's put up is a .312 expected batting average. Now expected batting average just takes the exit velocity and the launch angle of every ball you put into play and using some statistical probability things it calculates the probability that that would be a hit just based on those two things. So it basically just tells you how well you're hitting the ball. So Austin Nola is hitting the ball like crazy right now and I have no issues with that. Preller, great job at getting a bat. But do you remember this guy? In case you don't, this is Joe Maurer and he is arguably one of the greatest catchers of all time. These were his stats before he hit the age of 30. He was a six time all-star by then and he was hitting like crazy. Won an MVP, crazy ball player. But look at his career after he hit the age of 30. Everything decreased, he never made another all-star game. And this is also after they transitioned him to first base so that he could prolong his career and hit for a longer time. But clearly his early years of catching took a huge toll on his body. And guess how old Austin Nola is? Well, you guessed it, he's 30. The average MLB career is 5.6 years long, but the average for catchers is 5.2. But the most telling statistic is that 50% of catchers have careers that are 3 years or less. This means that most catchers do not have long lasting careers, but the ones that do, they play on forever. Now, is Austin Nola one of them? I don't know. I can't tell you that. But statistically, there's a good chance he doesn't last very long. Now, the one thing he does have going for him is that he's not a full-time catcher. He only started catching professionally at the age of 27. So it hasn't worn down his body that much. But again, if he's only going to play catcher for the Padres, who knows how this trade will look in the future. Nola is going to replace Luis Torrens, who the Padres are giving up to the Mariners. Now, Torrens doesn't have much MLB experience, but if you look at his line from the past season he spent at Double A, very similar to Nola. And this year, sure, he's only played seven games, but he has the same expected batting average as Nola. So is this an upgrade? I don't know. Torrens hasn't shown any capability of achieving long-term success in the MLB. But he is in his 20s, significantly younger than Nola, so maybe he has a higher potential. Let's move on to Ty France. Now France, his line from 2020 is solid, but I don't think we can fully understand the context of Ty France unless we compare him to the season he had last year. Now last year to this year, most of his stats are up, but the two key things I want you to notice is that his hard hit percentage is down from 42.6% to 30.6%. And he's striking out at a higher rate. 
He's striking out about 27% this year, and the MLB average is about 22%. Now, to keep in mind, Adam Dunn's strikeout percentage throughout his career was 28.6%. So, in some sense, I think Ty France's stats this year are lying. He's not nearly as good of a hitter as the numbers are saying right now. So that's okay, but who else do the Padres give up? Let's move on to Andres Munoz. Now, Munoz only pitched in a couple games last season, but this guy threw gas. His stats are pretty good, but he can literally reach 104 miles per hour on his fastball. Like, this guy throws heat. And sure, he's coming off Tommy John, but when he could pitch his fastball anywhere near the strike zone last year, he was solid. So not only are the Mariners getting a decent prospect at catcher, a hitter who's hitting well above form this year, but also a pitcher who could just throw gas. I know I'm saying the word gas a lot, but have you ever tried to hit a 104 mile per hour fastball? It's nearly impossible. But the trade doesn't end there, ladies and gentlemen. The Mariners are also getting big guy Taylor. Now Taylor, MLB.com has him ranked as a top prospect. They ranked him as the 57th best prospect in 2020. But the thing is, he hit .234 in AA last season with very little power. Now you're watching some clips from some scrimmages before the season began, and you can tell this guy just can't catch up to a regular fastball. So in my opinion, this guy's complete garbage. He is absolutely useless. He's a slower version of Billy Hamilton. Terrible prospect, should not be ranked this high. And this is exactly why I think the Padres just screwed up this trade real bad. I have absolutely no problem with who the Padres gave up. Ty France, I think he's overrated. Taylor Trammell, I think he's overrated. Munoz, I love him a lot, but I think he's expendable. And Torrens, expendable as well. But the issue is, who the heck did we get in return? We got two relief pitchers, one who's coming off an of ACL tear, and the other who just can't pitch. And we got Austin Nola, solid catcher, don't get me wrong, but he's in the second half of his career and he's played two years in the majors. He's proven very little. And when we trade a top prospect, I should expect way more. And I know you know that. So stop being a fan that blindly follows management and blindly follows the team and actually stand up for what you believe in. Padres lost this trade, but hopefully they won't trade hedges or I'm actually never watching a game again.